This is John Young with the Distracky News and Distracky News TV. Today we've got a special little little interview we're going to be doing with James Keeley. James is going to be walking us through the brand new software from American DJ ADJ. We're going to be looking at DMX 3.0, and we've got it set up here so you guys can check this out. James, I've got you up. How are you doing today? Hey, John. What's going on? Hey, hey. Just kind of excited to check this out. We've been talking about this for a while, and I wanted to see all the new tech and I haven't and now we have it so let's let's kind of show everyone what's all going new here in the 3.0 version of uh, my DMX yeah um, I've been really excited to kind of get this out there and LDI was a huge show for us that's where we uh, launched it and it's just been non-stop ever since LDI um, so as you can see I'm actually uh, you can see in my video I've got some parts running, my moving heads are in standby, you know, whole time. So that right there is like uh, the multi-scene ability that like you wanted. Um, so I'll just go ahead and uh, turn on a sequence. And I even change up the color of my pars. So James, James, what, what lights do you have going there? We can see, um, and from the video clip, it looks like for those of you watching, of course, it's right above me. Um, uh, the outer black moving heads are the focus spot two. Okay. The middle white ones are the focus spot three Z. Nice. And the park hands are the A to J favorite five P hex. So very uh, nice. So on color mixing, moving heads, prisms, color wheel, all that stuff. It's really cool. So for those of you watching, the colors are going to be off on these things because we're looking at it through web cameras and doing different things. And those really don't give you even real camera camcorders don't give you great color yeah. representation so what you're seeing it looks from our perspective right now james it looks purple the uh yeah. the five p's purple. yeah it's it's basically uv at full and a little bit of amber okay so it's like a like an orange orange purple so uh, i don't know so yeah, so colors, colors. When we're talking about the colors, and especially when James is like, and now we're gonna go to red. It won't, may not look red to us, but trust me, I've got the five P's. I love those lights, and the red is red, the green is green, the blue is blue, and the UV will definitely make the white things stand out and pop. Okay, so that's what we have for lights. So now let's let's kind of go through. What are we looking at here now? I see we've got group group one um, positions, yeah. group two, group three. What what are we? What is all of this? So the grouping is where you is how you actually stack your cues or scenes as we call them. Okay. Um, I have a group one, which is just general stuff that I've made. Uh, obviously the color chase sequence. You can even see the uh, the, the text is scrolling because I've labeled it longer than what the button really kind of shows. Right. Um. So this is playing, and while it's playing live, um, I can expand it, make it look bigger. I can dim it down, can make it go faster, but it's color wheel, so it's not as fast as LED. Um, so, but these grouping buttons allow you to stack stuff. So you create different groups of different scenes that you want to uh, stack on top of other scenes from other groups. Um, I've got another group for positions. So you'll see uh, you're gonna move to position one then I switch up to position two, and then I can let them go. They'll go back to how they were programmed. You know, if you want to do that in my DMX 2.0, that take you like an hour to, or so to, to make those two uh, scenes because you have to copy that effect over. Um, now you don't need to because you can create groups just for effects and stack them on top of other effect, other uh, other scenes. Okay. So now when, it, when you're doing that now, it does, as I'm looking, let's, let's dig into group one a little bit more. We've got our play, pause, and forward, backward. Now, mm -hmm. does that move you from, from, from block to block, or what do those, those components do? Or do they just stop the show with whatever block you've got chosen? Yeah, uh, this group button up top here, yep. this is like the master play, pause, next, uh, previous, and stuff like that. So I could go, I could leave it paused and go back. It's still paused and then play. Uh, play goes to the top of the group. Oh, sure. Your next scene, your next scene, click the play, uh, pause button again, and then they'll play. So you can go back, 
can pause it, go forward, play it. And if you if you have a smaller screen, you know uh, screen real estate is at a premium in software. Uh -huh. And if I really really wanted to, I can make everything really small, like smaller than this. So everything is just tiny little column to click on. So we, I mean, we, there's over. You could have. I mean, this is uh, what five six scenes and just this little part here yeah um you could have like just rows and rows of scenes so people who love to program lots of cues and lots of different stuff um this will allow you to do that so let's, let's dig into one of those little blocks of what what's involved with that i mean you were showing us um i believe it was the red one or is it the the chase the color change where you could slow it down speed it up and dim it and and such but there's got to be more to it than just that uh, right there, yep. So we have those basic controls, but now how did you define what that block, who, which lights it talks to and such? How did I what? How did you define what that block, what it talks to, which lights and oh, such? Um, well, when you, the, the, the great thing about the 3.0 is when you're making groups, uh, you define your own parameters for programming to that group. Like if you want a group, to be just dimmer chases you literally just go in and program uh dimmer chases so if you go back to edit and say i wanted to make a position based off of this one uh, i can just duplicate it click on it and then i'm going to need to turn on the light beam so i can see it and you can do that just by clicking this little button here beam on and it takes everything that's selected, and it opens up the shutter, brings the dimmer up at full. Um, and now I can edit this and just kind of make make these go like straight. Just kind of grip the pan and stuff. So if I go to if I go to the focus spot 3Z tab. Click on pan, and it fixes itself. Or go to palette, switch up the, the view completely. Or what's kind of cool is I'm going to kind of go against the rules of my group here. If I go to general, and it's a little slow because we're screen sharing and stuff. Sure. But, and this is not a beast of computer, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so if I go to general and I select my four spots here, uh, because when I made this profile, I use RGB values to pick out the colors for the color wheel. And this is even in 2.0 as well, 2.1, I should say now. Um, if I go to the color picker here mm -hmm. and I go to red, do full on red. So you can see that they're all kind of following the color and the color picker based off of the RGB value I use to make the color slot. Hmm. So, I mean, all these, this, you can, you can have a group for just colors. You can have a group for dimmer effects. You can have um, a group of literally nothing that triggers various combinations of other groups. Um, I'll show you how to do that as well, if you want to. Um, just, I was just kind of wondering now, what do you, as far as DMX addresses with those lights, how do you have those set up? Are, do each one have an individual address or are you doubling up? Where, where, where yeah, yeah. Um, the patching window is just the same as any, as the other software, my DMX 2.0, 2.1. You find it in the library and drag it and patch it in. So just uh, like I've imported my own profile for the focus spot 3Z, find the mode, drag and drop. Hmm. Um, so it's pretty much the exact same way. I mean, you click on, click on a fixture, it gives you the address with and the dip switch. Oh, nice. So that, or 
So if you have moving heads and you have um, two or four and you want to invert the pan or tilt, but you don't know how to do it on the, the fixtures menu system, the manual is confusing or whatever, um, you just click this little button here like I did. Yeah. Just use from grid mode to like a list mode. And you can literally just go in and, you know, focus spot, 3Z. I'm going to invert the, uh, the camera. Um, have invert pan, invert inverter pan, invert tilt, and swap pan and tilt. So if I wanted to invert um, you know, focus spot 2 and focus spot 3Z on the left, so that way they cross yep. even with the ones on the right. I could do that here just by inverting uh, the pan on this one and then this one. Mm -hmm. And that'll be invert. Easy as that. So it looks like so, you're using about 102 DMX channels, right, with this configuration? Did I see that uh, right? You're using I'm using 21 channels for the three Zs and 18 channel mode for the focus spot twos. Um, and for the hardware that I have hooked up, the 3.0 box, it's a full 512 universe. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the buddy, 256, but you also have to purchase a separate license to use the buddy on 3.0. Okay. So it's it's upgradable pretty much. You already have the hardware. You just got to pay for the upgrade now. You know, sure. and you get all this new stuff. So new capability. Very uh, neat. Very neat. So, so the software knows then because these two lights are the, the the focus spots and such are using different definitions for red, and the software knows because of of you guys programming it that when you did that color picker, it knows yeah. what DMX code, what have you, um, what digital signal to send out to tell the red to go on that light. Exactly. And, and you, did, you didn't have to do any programming. It's basically collect or select, line them up. And uh, yeah, all I did was uh, make these colors appear in the fixture profile. Yeah. And they will automatically just match on once you're in the. Uh, if you gotta, uh, not, obviously, it's not going to give you a color picker in the actual fixture tab, like here. It's mm -hmm. just going to give you the option. Um, but if you go to general and you select all of them, well, let's let's even let's throw on the um, the five P's, five yeah. P's yeah, and kind of do this like that. So turn on the dimmers. All of them are dimming at the same time. And I think for the five P's, I have to turn on the shutter. Yep, there we go. And also the the white kind of gets in the way a little bit, but so let's go palette. I'll just set these. Also, uh, you'll notice that I, I'm selecting fixtures because 3.0 relies more upon how how and the order of how you select your fixtures. Hmm. So they must be selected in order for them to actually do anything and, and output data. Interesting. So everything's yellow, blue. So, but this this really isn't even the best part. So the coolest thing that we've kind of snuck into this uh -huh. is if I go to effect and you know if I do like a pixel effect. Um, for us, if right now, I mean, it's it's not keeping the color of the spots, you know, it's just kind of, but you can see the five P's changing. Yep. So, but just kind of make it more uh, old so you can see the difference. Um, let's go ahead and use the chaser. And I turn on the hazer machine so you might hear it. Um, so these are selected. All the little, all the spots are doing is the dimmer intensity, right? It's yeah. kind of boring. I wish that as I'm using this, doing this effect, 
but it would change the color of my spots too. That'd be great, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, we added that. So if we do uh, on the current step, include the set levels, which is like the pan values, the shutter values, dimmer values. If you're using a color, or I'm sorry, if you're using the global focus, zoom, all that stuff, it's gonna grab all that stuff and put it into this scene once I hit generate. Um, it's really not supposed to be part of this group, but I'm gonna leave it there and I'll show you how it's easy to fix that later on. So something I'll hit generate. Notice how the spots changed a little bit. So let's see what happens. Look, let's look at some of the faders here on say like the three Zs as we hit play. It's finding the color from the effect and popping it on on the moving head. So can you see that? Mm -hmm. So if you like to do those, if you have a lot of LEDs and some moving heads and you want that green matrix green or whatever, or green and blue matrix green, try not to go, oh, Oh, well, how do I get, I got, now I got to leave some on blue, some on green. No, we're going to pop on that color for you in the effects engine on moving heads without color mixing. Uh, I don't know of any other software that's doing that or even big boy consoles that are doing that at this moment without seeing why. Sure. So I, I think I was really surprised at that um, and that, that they were able to include that in the software so quickly. So very neat. Yeah. So, but you know, but uh, now this isn't this. This is an overall scene which should really be in this group, you know. So, how do I move that to that group and kind of get rid of the uh, you know the values that I don't want? Well, you just drag it, drop it. And now it's in here. Sure. And uh, it goes right up at the top. If you don't want it up at the top, just plop it down to the bottom. Everything is easily movable, changeable. Um, say I, I, I just made this and I want to add a gobo to all the, all the moving hits. I hold select as I click on the first step. And then I click on the last step. It selects every step in between. I go to my focus spot 3Z, throw on the scobo, and I'll turn on auto focus so it focuses. I will go to the 3Z and turn on the scobo. Maybe focus it up a little bit and I'll kick on the prism maybe back to the focus spot turn on one of their prisms okay, maybe you will it a little bit so now I hit play and it's kept all my changes for the entire sequence because I selected every step in between. So easy to customize, easy to edit, um, really nicely, uh, nicely redone effects engine. Uh, way more, way more options. So James, how long would it take for a person to, to program Say if you wanted to have have the in this particular configuration, you just want to have your moving heads uh, panning back and forth. Is that something? Does it take five minutes to to do that? Would that take you ten minutes to do that? How how to just? No, yeah, I mean if you want, uh, I can. Uh, the scene is playing. I'm gonna stop it, and I'm just gonna hit new scene. Uh, let's just see how long it takes. So we'll go to general, and we'll do a. I'll turn on the beams for these lights. Man, it's bright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they wash the camera. There we go. Now we they come back. This spot three three Zs are no joke, man. Uh, 100 watts and 75 watts. Uh, you'll be all right with that. Uh, so grab them, turn them on. Maybe 
Now find the color to yellow. Maybe not as bright. I don't know. <laughs> no, they look good. Yeah, and but it, it worked globally too, you know. So all four fixtures gonna affect. Um, we'll do a pan of tilt. Then I'll go into a circle. So move the circle around the grid a little bit. Resize it. Trying to figure out so it doesn't point backwards. Smaller. All right, so that'll work. So, I mean, there's two different kinds of moving heads, so they're, the speeds are a little bit different. Yep. Um, but you can phase it, you know. Then you can speed it up by doing less time in between steps. I'm just going to tweak it some more a little bit. Have it there front facing. You know, mess with the phasing value. And if uh, one other thing that's cool is since you're doing fixture selection, if you, you know, say click these off, they stop. And say I wanted to go um, from this one first, then that one, then that one, then that one. Uh -huh. They're going to phase and play back in that order. So this is one of the, the highlights of being able to select your fixtures and control the order and how they play. Interesting. So now I'm getting blinded. I have to dodge <laughs> the light. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure everybody else is getting blinded too. So uh, let's maybe make it down a little bit. And so uh, that was what? Uh, a couple of minutes at, at most. Yeah. And with me explaining it step by step, but uh, once... Once you once you got it, you're done. Click yeah. generate. You're probably gonna want to do um, on current step and, and include set levels because you made a new scene already to go into for this effect to go into that. button. if you leave new scene checked, it's just gonna take everything and put it in a, into a new button. So then you have an empty one behind it. Mm -hmm. So it's just about knowing the order on how to do it. So let's just go ahead and play that back. Uh, it's pretty much the the speed and phase that uh, that I recorded it at. Yeah, and it's less than uh, forty steps, fifty steps on there. Neat. Very very neat. Well, software has come a long way since the, the first versions where it seemed like you were completely yeah. talking a different language. Right. And so, I mean, like I said, it's about patch, group, program, and organization. So you have to do a little bit more organizing uh, in this in 3.0 than you would in 2.0, but it's for the better. So... Yeah. Great stuff. A nice overview there, James. I, I appreciate your time with that. That's uh, some good stuff. If uh, people want to find out more information about my DMX uh, 3.0, where's the best spot for them to go to find out about this? You can go to the my DMX 3.0 product page, or we have a very nice Facebook group community um, with the, almost 2,000 members. Wow. Where Everybody interacts and asks questions on a daily basis uh, at all hours of the day and night that I can attest to. <laughs> <laughs> um, the link to the Facebook group is even on the Mighty Mix 3 Facebook page or product page. Which they can go out to adj.com so, and they ADJ. can. adj.com slash Mighty Mix 
dash three, I think it is. Yeah, you guys can go there. You can search for it in the quick find, and you'll be able to get right to the page. And then you can link to the Facebook group and learn more about uh, this. This really yeah. cool new this version. This is of my even game. the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Yep. This is like I was screwing around for a half hour, and I figured I'd show you what's up. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great stuff. Just to give an idea of, of some of the capability and. And make it so it's not quite as intimidating. I think that's one of the big things that DMX can be really intimidating for a lot of folks. So it's kind of cool when it's it's click and drag and, and things are, are there where you yeah. can it's more of that icon base. And I'm doing video tutorials as I can. Good deal. Good deal. Well, James, thank you much for being on with that tonight. Once again, gang, we'll put the links in the description below so you can go check it out and uh, see if it's going to be a great option for running your light show. This is John Young with the Disjockey News. Oh.